record amount of rainfall and one of the worst floods in St. Louis history. Tonight, we're nearing the one year mark for a time that remains really hard to talk about for a lot of people. In last July's flooding, University City perhaps came out the worst with recovery continuing even now tonight. And, and News 4's Russell Kinsall is hearing from one victim who says more needs to be done to prevent another disaster. Russell. Right now I'm on Dartmouth Avenue. This area was hit really hard. Water in the street was up to here. Basements on that side and on that side were flooded. The area has its own homeowners association. They formed their own uh, flood task force. When it came to ideas on what could be done to reduce the risk of future flooding, there was a lot of agreement that River to Pair, which runs behind these homes over here, that something needs to be done to make sure that the river channel is clear of any debris. And then I opened <laughs> the door to the basement. It was all the way up to the first step. As highways were swamped and parking lots became lakes, on Dartmouth Avenue in University City, water was rushing into homes. We had seven and a half feet of water in the basement. Here are photos showing what Dartmouth looked like before the flood and what it looked like on July 22nd. Yeah, it was very devastating. In University City, more than 300 homes were flooded and hundreds of cars were totaled. The HVAC system. Everything in the basement was totally wiped out. Dumpsters were filled with personal possessions and priceless keepsakes were ruined. We didn't even know what to do next, frankly. So it took a while to sort that all out. Recovery has been slow. It took Selena McGinnis almost a full year to get back into her home on Dartmouth. Yeah, there were a lot of complications as far as what the FEMA said and state said and city said. And there were a lot of rules that I um, had to learn about. In the last year, University City has installed three river gauges to better track rising water in River to Pair and started a code red alert system to warn people in flood prone areas. Don Fitz says flood victims are convinced that the River to Pair channel had failed to be kept cleared out and debris in it made the flood worse. What's going to be done about keeping the tunnel of the River to Pair free of debris? getting the debris out of the inside of the tunnel and, uh, and doing our best to make sure that this in intense of a flood does not happen again. Residents believe it's MSD's responsibility to keep the river channel clear, but an MSD spokesperson said the real problem is that their homes are in a floodplain. It does not matter how much debris is in the River de Pair. These areas are going to experience flooding when we have rain events like the 500 year rain we saw last summer. So MSD said it is not their responsibility to monitor for debris in the river channel and clean it out, but they'll be glad to come out and clean out significant amounts of debris if somebody sees that and calls it into them. So this Homeowners Association Flood Task Force is holding a public meeting. A number of prominent officials locally will be talking and answering questions. It'll be held Thursday at 7 o'clock at the University City High School. David. So Russell, University City had plans to buy out 380 homes. Where do those plans stand right now? Yeah, so that was a that was a big idea to begin with, but they got word that the federal government would never give them enough money to buy out that many homes. So they reduced the number of homes to 24. This is kind of interesting. MSD told me today that uh, the Independent Rate Commission is considering a potential rate increase that they may take to the voters. If voters approve that rate increase, it would include money for buyouts of homes in flood prone areas, not only University City, but other areas around the metro. Live in U City, Russell Kinsall News 4. Russell, thanks.